Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and joining me as I explore the global, international, wide world of pens. And we see in front of you a plastic envelope that came from Thailand. Yes, and it's a Japanese pen I bought from a Thailand seller, Pestel Cactus Cafe. Here's a listing on Etsy. They have a large selection of somewhat vintage pilot pens. Here's some of them that are on the site today. I think they're good prices, and we'll take a look at the one that I received, and we'll also take a look at a pen that I've had for a while that Cac Pastel Cactus Cafe is selling, so you can compare that and see if you have any interest. Stay tuned for the pens. Here's the Pilot Woody, partially disassembled. One of the design flaws is when you unscrew the section, this metal ring is loose. And it's also some uh, facilitation of capping. The nib and feed pulled out, but it uh, took me uh, flushing with soapy water to lubricate it so it would pull out easily. It didn't pull out easily to begin with. And yes, that is a fine pilot nib. And it's a little bit of a vintage feed here. Not typical. As we discussed, the nibs are different. And the feed is different too. Kind of has that resemblance to a carved Evanite feed, but it obviously isn't. We're going to look inside the cap with the LED next. You might think from the design that that cap finial unscrews, but certainly not something I'm going to be doing. If you look inside the cap, we'll see a nice plastic liner, which extends all the way through to the top. So you really can't see, but there looks like there could be some glue down there. Just a standard design, and for an expensive vintage pen, I think they did a good job. There's a liner inside the barrel also which is interesting. Those little uh, ridges in there probably keep the converter from sloshing around. So here's the Pilot Crystal, which disassembled quite a bit more. That finial in the cap, which has those uh, bubbles in it, unscrews from the cap liner. And I used a pencil in here to hold this in place to get this finial to unscrew all the way. That also holds on this clip. And I've talked about clips made from folded metal, so you can see how the end of the clip is just folded over. You know, the inexpensive way to make a clip. And this uh, silver ring, which is loose, fits on top of this cap, which is clear. And they let you know the model of the pen. Clear barrel, a standard converter, and it's interesting that it is a, a clear feed or somewhat transparent feed, but it seems to be made of that same type of material, has kind of like a matte finish to it, and we have these old style pilot nibs in fine 
with no wings on it, feet, whatever you want to call it. And just a standard section here. And molded inside of it is that little protuberance which fits the converter. So that's nice. One of the things that I found interesting is you have this big converter opening, but you still just have that small little area there for the ink to go into. And obviously that fits inside the section where the converter also attaches. So as I investigate this pen further, it's a little white plastic liner inside of this section, and there's a slight flat spot right there. But the flat spot is usually at the bottom of the feed. This feed, the flat spot is at the top. And Pilot did do a nice design that nib fits up against that ridge and fits nicely on the feed. And we're going to position that flat spot at the top when we reinsert. And there we go. Put back together, ready to assemble the pen and ink it up. So I mentioned a little bit before where the nibs in these two pilot pens I'm reviewing are slightly different design. Here at the top is a standard uh, pilot nib that they use now currently, Metropolitan, um, all their lower end pens. And there is no of those, what we call them, wings or feet or whatever you want to call it. The design is a little bit different on the front. And you can see that this is that medium, which they're known for, that's a little bit of a stub more than anything else. So interesting how Pilot has evolved their nibs and feeds over time in their lower end pens. So you may ask, uh, what's the difference between a uh, regular nib and those Pilot medium nibs? Here is the Wing Sung, which is the Pilot design, which has normal tipping on it. And here is the Pilot medium nib, and they both have M for medium, which is definitely more of a stub. And no real tipping material on the end of that nib. As I try to position them for you to view and hopefully see the difference. There are some that really dislike this Aerometric filler that a lot of people have used. I think Parker was the first, at least the first to really commercialize it in the early 50s, and they put it on their 51, which I would think would be an endorsement since that was their flagship pen. Here's an even cheaper made converter by Pilot, which usually comes with the Pilot Parallels, and technically it's called a cleaner to flush the nib and feed, but you can use it for ink. Here's two Con 40s slash Con 50s, which hold like a half a milliliter of ink. It's really small. And here's one. I think both of these may have come from uh, vanishing points, but they put those little balls in there, and then they put that metal ring to keep the balls from falling out. All the converters from Pilot have that huge opening in it, but then they put restrictions in it. You know, and that's like supposedly an agitator, so I, maybe the balls were an early version, later version, who knows. But their top-of-the-line converter, the Con 70, works as like a pump filler, holds a fair amount of ink, Definitely much over a milliliter, but the trouble is it's too big to fit in a lot of their pens like the two that we're talking about today. So I, they made a lot of different versions of, of converters, but most of them have some deficiencies in it, at least from my perspective. Either holding a small amount of ink or being difficult to clean like the Con 70. I think these pens are interesting for their little bit of history. Let's look at the crystal first. Again, the dates on these pens are 1980, maybe early 1990s. Then they all have that kind of labeling system. Certainly could not be confused with higher end pens. They have defects in them. And the crystal is known for its cracking. And we'll see that happening now with this end finial of the barrel, which unscrews easily. I don't know why, just, they just didn't feel like doing anything else. I've inked it up 
Birmingham Tesla coil. You saw that in the writing sample. And the clear section certainly is nice with that clear feed. So it tends to show off the color of the ink. But the nib is really subpar. It would take a decent amount of smoothing to make it a regular writer. If you look at the Woody, there's a lot of similar design. Same shaped clip with that opening in the middle. It's also branded in a similar way. And that's one of the traits that they have in common, decals. You know, they have the end finial here, which also unscrews. You can see how that injection molding um, is a different plastic, it appears, than what's on the crystal. Henceforth, I don't think there'll be cracking issues with this. Same pull-off cap, nice liner. You know, similar shaped section. The nib is just a little nicer, probably just the look of the draw more than anything else. But again, a little bit of history. Since I talked about the cap liner, we can see that cap liner inside and how the section snaps in place on the liner. There's uh, a few um, spots that grab the end of the section. Good design, but if you're looking for an inexpensive pilot pen, starter pen, I suggest you look at the Kakuna. Much better made. Yes, there's holes in the barrel so you can't eyedropper it, but that's a minor thing. Yeah, this has the uh, newer style pilot nib with those wings on it, so therefore it's a lot of replacements you could get that would fit into it. I just like this pen better from ergonomics, and yes, it is a triangular based section, so it's not as extreme as Safari's, but you know, it puts you in a certain spot. And yes, it does post nicely. Very light pen, just a decent writer, and for the price, I think, a good investment for, again, a beginner starter's pen, children's pen, giveaway pen. And I didn't really mention it, but these both post very deeply, very securely, very light cap, so the balance really doesn't change. So if you're a poster, these pens would work well for you. So now we're ready for summation. Here's the dimensions on the Woody, and the crystal is very, very close, very similar. So you can use that as a comparison. I did smooth the nibs and they did get a little bit better. And the Woody is labeled as an M for medium nib, which is indicative of that little bit of stubbiness that the nib has. But I primarily got the Woody and then remembered when I received it that I had the Crystal, which I'd bought many, many years ago for, I think, $10 at a pen show that I went to. So I'm glad I had both of these to be able to show you, you know, similar designs, similar nibs, but each pen has its own characteristics. If I had to choose one, I would choose the Woody. I just like the way that it looks better. I like that round section versus a triangular section on the crystal. So we've reached a conclusion of this video. I hope it finds all of you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, experimenting, buying something from Thailand, not certainly on my list originally, but they do have a good variety of these vintage style pilot pens if you're interested. And there'll be a link in the description for you to follow. To reach the end, thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you viewers. Like, comment, subscribe well, if you want to watch more. We're going to say bye-bye. We're at the end. See you soon.